celebrations to mark the reopening of Hargeisa Airport in Somaliland were eagerly prepared. Thanks to a $10 million upgrade funded by Kuwait, this small airport in the Horn of Africa is getting ready to serve more and more traffic. The redevelopment is all part of a much broader effort by the small breakaway republic, which declared independence from Somalia's Mogadishu government 22 years ago, to develop a more strategic role as a hub to serve a region that includes Ethiopia's 95 million people. Because Ethiopia is landlocked, it relies on its tiny neighbour Djibouti for critical access to the sea. But Ethiopia wants to broaden that and start sending 30% of its exports out through Somaliland, a nation of long nomadic traditions, camel trading and poetry. But developing the country's infrastructure will take time and money. This is an airport with not just one VIP lounge, but two. Uh, the executive lounge behind me is, is the plushest of the, of the pair, and it shows the kind of ambition that airport authorities here are pursuing. They've already re-strengthened the runway so it can take heavier planes, and eventually they want to add another full kilometre and a bit more to the length of the runway, so that eventually from taking planes of up to 70 people, it can land planes of up to 200 people. The impoverished, tiny territory that runs a budget of just $125 million a year, loses a whopping $529 million a year in hard currency to Ethiopia. Although Somaliland sells hundreds of thousands of camels every year to the Gulf, it manages to sell almost nothing to Ethiopia. Its precious hard currency instead goes on importing a leaf named Chat from its southern neighbour. The bitter plant recently banned in the UK produces a stimulant akin to the drug speed when chewed for hours. It supports local business and slows productivity at the same time. The territory, which is not recognised internationally, faces another and more imminent financial crisis. The UK's Barclays Bank has said it will no longer support money transfer companies that remit an estimated $1 billion plus a year to the Somali population. Campaigners say half the nation depends on this cash for its survival. Banks say they want to make sure they do not inadvertently support money launderers or finance terrorist networks. The squeeze has been going on ever since September 11th, really. Um, and people, uh, regulators in the US and the UK and other countries have been looking at money, at money transfer companies to see if these were conduits to finance terrorists around the world. Um, there hasn't been any good evidence that that's been the case. Uh, and, but ever since then, uh, banks have seen it uh, become much more difficult to take on money transfer companies as clients and as customers. The companies say they have developed rigorous checks, however. Somaliland is long used to security risks and keeps a vigilant watch. Back at the airport, it still carries the scars of the 1988 bombing campaign, when the Mogadishu government sent Russian MiGs to carpet bomb Hargeisa. Today, UK funding has paid for long-range surveillance cameras, five years after Al-Qaeda-linked jihadis attacked multiple targets in the city. Now were what campaigners are calling a lifeline to the nation to be cut, as is expected in the next few weeks, it's not clear what happens next. For terrorism networks and money laundering networks, criminal networks, if they are using money transfer services, they'll quickly find a new way to move their money around. Suitcases, flights, briefcases, after all, continue to exist. And it'll make it much harder for authorities to track that money, undermining the security effort in the first place. The corollary to this is also that, given half the nation by some accounts relies on remittances, should that money dry up, campaigners say the humanitarian cost and the impact of that is almost unthinkable. With the latest deadline shifted to the end of September, for now, people just keep on queuing. For the Financial Times, this is Katrina Manson in Hargeisa.